five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hello and welcome everyone to Truth Beer and Pod Sequences. So this is the podcast where my co-host and I listen to all the Cincinnati-based craft beer podcasts from the previous week. We get together at a podcast host and today we are back. Yeah, I was at you. Yeah, Te- technically, yeah, we are back. back. Yeah. We are back at Mad Tree 2.0. Yeah. And I know we weren't uh, we weren't uh, in sync on that that back, but we weren't sure if we were going to do the, the I, I was struggling for, you know, do I do back? Do I not? The people who who are just coming on board know that we were here a year ago, but they could have taken it as we're back for another week. Could have. You know, I don't know. Could have. So we know. are we are Back <laughs> at Matry 2.0. We were here a year ago. Yeah. Uh, for I mean, we we came here. We recorded with uh, the gnarly gnome. Uh, we had a Pride cocktail. Delicious. Yeah. Uh, delicious. Uh, today, by the way, is July fourth. We so. are recording on the holiday because that's how dedicated we are. That's right. To recording every single Tuesday. That, and I'm going to be honest. I wanted to see some trains. It's, yeah. It's been a while. It's been, been a while. while. And uh, haven't seen a single one go not by one, yet. Not a so, single one. Um, not a single one. Now, uh, it's fine. just everybody, please know, please go and support our uh, regular podcast. So it was Higher Gravity Summit Park. Mm-hmm. As about probably, what, 200,000 people so many or something people. are going to be there, uh, which is why we are not there. Right. Uh, I mean, and in, in, in all, in just full disclosure, truthful and transparent. We love the place. We, we are not going to deal with that shit. Well, there no, are 200,000 It's way too other much people. traffic. It's way too much headache. Well, we like, couldn't we, even park anywhere near. They had parking no. closed off like yesterday, no. today. They had the no parking signs up like three weeks ago yeah. saying, just so you know, Monday and Tuesday, July 3rd and 4th, you cannot park right. in the places that we normally park. Correct. Um, yeah. So yeah, hopefully it is hopefully it is a great July Fourth out mm-hmm. there in Blue Ash for uh, you know the the red white and boom Blue Ash red Fred, white and blue hosted boom hosted by hosted by sponsored by Fretboard Fretboard love Fretboard love red wa- Fretboard. red white and blue ash uh, I was at Fretboard yesterday nice I was there on Thursday had a Fretboard light and then I picked up a, a crowler of a collaboration with Listerman nice uh, I think yeah. it was called Won't You Be My Neighbor. Yeah, I remember neighbor being part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I, I believe there's a, a picture of uh, Fred Rogers on the tap handle. Nice. Uh, and then I, I picked up uh, a beer that you wanted to have. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when I was there, uh, it was a we had a big project at work uh, over this, the the last three days, and uh, we went there the day before the project kicked off. It's kind of a okay, let's everyone get together, let's go out for some drinks, for some food, and they're like, oh, where do we go? Let's go here, let's go here, and I said. Why don't we get a fretboard? It's not even 10 minutes away from where we work. Right. You have amazing food through Smoked Out Cincy, I said, and, and, and the beer is phenomenal. It's a great vibe. It's a great place. And everyone's like, okay, that sounds good. Great job, So shit up there. And the next day when we kicked off the project, pretty much everyone said that place was awesome. Really loved it. Looking forward to going back when we can. So... Yeah. So it was it was a hit, but yeah, they had you know, a short on tap. Of great ideas. Absolutely, I am. I don't have many of them, but when they when they work, they work. <laughs> Just like this podcast, it's yeah. uh, Julia's idea to come together no, with this podcast. No, no, no. And uh, so that was all you, man. <laughs> oh well. I just went sure, I guess, and here we are now. Well, she's a queen of screens because she found me on social media. <laughs> but uh, yes, yeah, so here we are. We are at Mad Tree 2.0. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you, Mad Tree 2.0, for being gracious podcast host. This place is really fantastic. A lot has changed over the past yeah, year, and yeah. a lot stayed the same. Uh, Merchandise location has moved. Just to kind of go into, uh, we only have three shows to talk about this week. Right. So, I mean, we can take a little longer on the intro than maybe we, we normally do. Location of the, the to-go cooler has moved. The location of the merchandise has moved. They have an amazing... Two, two to-go coolers right there. Oh, the two of them. Yeah, I missed yeah. the first one. Oh, okay, I do. I only, from where I'm sitting, yeah. my, my angles were wrong. They have an amazing, it's not like backsplash, but it's not a mural, but the decorations that they have behind the garage doors leading out from the taproom mm-hmm. into the beer garden made entirely of pack techs is stunning. Mm-hmm. Like it really, really is. Really good. Beyond gorgeous. Uh, the place is, is packed, as we were pretty sure it was going to be on a holiday. Um, a lot of families, a lot of pack in place, so I don't know what we're going to have to say yeah. about that, but if you know, you know. If you know, but everything's you know. Uh, 
But no, I mean, the, the vibe's amazing. The, as the, you're watching the Reds while we record, so we may get yeah. a couple interjections uh, about how they're doing. 7-4. Seven to four, uh, Seven to four on the bottom of the seventh. Okay. Um, so still doing okay. Still doing okay. Not yeah. a, okay. Not a lot of game to go. A yeah. uh, bit of a disclaimer before we get too far down the rabbit holes of God knows what we're going to end up talking about today. Uh, all the thoughts and opinions on this show are the thoughts and opinions of Marco and Julia. Are so I don't know if we even By actually way, introduce yes, ourselves. <laughs> I am Marco, I'm the tap room manager here locally. And we don't know what we're doing. Julia is the best <laughs> co-host in podcast land, yeah. And the queen of screens. And, and uh, the queen of screens. And I don't know how to unlock SD cards. You do. You <laughs> I do. I learned it. Yeah, I didn't know. It was uh, weird. Yeah, a, couple it was of, a couple of strange uh, technical today, production yeah. issues today. A little yeah. weird. I don't know if it's because it's the holiday, if the board is angry that we're not at our normal spot. Don't know, but we got it figured out, so we are able to do all these things. But yes, thoughts and opinions on this show are ours and ours alone. They don't reflect any of the thoughts or opinions or stances of any place that we are associated with, such as our full-time jobs or anywhere that we record at, such as Mantry or Higher Gravity. Yes. Um, But yeah, podcast about podcasts, uh, beer podcasts, and that makes us a beer podcast. I'm, wow. Yeah, this so, is I mean, going great. No, but we, <laughs> no craft beer podcast would be a good craft beer podcast if you weren't having a beverage, right? True. And true. so, I mean, because we're sensitive to the fact that so many craft uh, places um, make more than just beer. Oh, yeah. uh, they're beyond beer. And some uh, there are craft distilleries as well. So um, it could be just about anything in, in the, the realm of craft. Mm-hmm. Uh, however, today... We are drinking craft beer. Absolutely. What's in your uh, place, Marco? I have a new one on the board. It is oh. called Psychopathy. Oh, that's how you pronounce it? Well, I thought you, it was like you... Psycho Hoppy. Psycho Hoppy? Yeah, I don't Hoppa. Yeah, I don't know. It's very yeah. odd, very strange. New one uh, seems to be doing well. Yeah, it's it's a seems nice. Uh, it's a nice. It's nice. It's bitter. It's clear. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is. It is very Fantastic. clear. I think you you got Has, something with this one, Matry. I think so too. Hopefully, uh, hopefully things stay the same with it as time goes on. Uh, I have one that this is my second one of these for today because it's absolutely delicious. It is Firefly Nightlight. It's a uh, like a citrus wheat ale. Wheat. Wheat. And in their social media post, it says uh, it's a crushable wheat ale with an orange slice. But my first glass of this was missing said orange slice. So I was like, wait a minute. I'm not going to go back up and say, can I have my orange slice, please? Because that's, yeah. no, not, whatever. It tastes a great regard. It's a garnish, right, exactly. Do you wash so, your hands with it? or I mean, Maybe. Yeah. You bite into it. You know when you were a kid, you've been to the orange thing and like smiled and acted like the orange was your teeth? I am still a kid. <laughs> Just so, I, yeah, I still do that too. But I am happy to say that uh, my, my bartender, when I got uh, this pour, handed me the glass, orange on the rim, couldn't be happier. Yeah. All right. Love it. Love well, it when you're... Never mind. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I could... Yeah, I'm not... No. So many kids here. There are. Most of them are young enough to where I don't think they would have any comprehension of what we're saying, but right. we're still going to try to be a little more aware of uh, of what we're saying. Yeah. I out, mean, of, I, out of respect for I can't for, promise for that, you know... No, no, but uh, again... Yeah. I'm going to try to see what we can do. So we only have three shows to talk about. I guess everyone took it's last week I'm off of... The uh, mic. You can hear that on, like, live. Perfect. Uh, I guess everyone decided to take the week off. We did not. We said, hey, Tuesday's a holiday. Do we want to still do this? And we both agreed, yes. Like, if why there, not? If there are shows. And we, even sa- and we even said if there are no shows to talk about on Tuesday, we're still, still going to get together and record something, either content for Patreon, YouTube, whatever. Yeah. We are dedicated. Michael Heyman might like that better. He you might. He really might. It's true. You never know. You never know. Uh, so this week, we're going to talk about the Craft Parenting Pod, episode 108. They are doing so many beer-focused episodes. It's ridiculous. So yeah. I, they're trying so hard to clean out that beer fridge. It's a little look at me, Louie, really. <laughs> I mean, what they're look doing. Look at all these beers. <laughs> so you're like... This, I know. Let's just put out another beer <laughs> episode. Oh, Marco and Julia are going to talk about us now. Uh, of it's, course. You know. Oh, you yeah. crack the code. Oh, yeah. We're here talking about it. Uh, uh, they were on the YouTube Live. They were yeah. on the YouTube Live. I didn't yeah. catch 108. I, I didn't live, either. And I, no. didn't, I didn't watch. So I watched 107. Mm-hmm. Did you watch I, it live or did you just watch it after the fact? 
think I watched it live. Okay, okay. And then I think I called them afterwards. All right. Um, which is a little odd because I mean, uh, Carol, Caroline doesn't usually get a call from me at ten thirty at night on a random Friday. Yeah, normally she's the one doing the calls, asking about feet, feet picks. picks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, then we also have the Bruce Guys Bruise News, which is a YouTube show, but it ties very closely into the Bruce Guys Happy Hour podcast. And Brett and Mike are fantastic, so we're going to talk about everything that they do. Yeah. You guys can deal with it. And then we have a super short episode of The Weekly Pint to talk about. Yep. And that came out super early yesterday. It did. So where did you want to start? I would like to start with the uh, craft parenting feed picks. <laughs> Well, because this is an audio-only format, people are not going to see the feet pics that you know you and I are sharing back and forth of. So, because Caroline sent you, we are Caroline. not sharing. No, we we're not. not we're not. Feet pics. We're making. Caroline sends. Well, what? Well, she what asked I was, no, for no, no, feet pics. You didn't let me finish though. Because oh, okay, what go I was going to say is, I'm apparently what she sent you is different than what she sent me. Ah, so we're going to be comparing who got the better feet pics. Yeah. Ne- neither of us got tiny hand pictures. No, no. Didn't get them. Do, do you? Uh, I have. I still have Joe's framed handprint that I have to figure out where I need to put it. Well, from I, last week, I would go love. Bit. Go ahead. To hang it up, like to find like a hidden place at higher gravity to put it. But I think, <laughs> I think I would get banned from both locations for life. If uh, <laughs> I think it'd be awesome. It'd be like, what are you doing? No, no, we're not. This makes no sense. This this isn't no. Well, I still have it in the the bag that mm-hmm. they presented to us because a, a little bit behind the curtain, I'm actually gonna move. Yeah, yeah. I'm moving house, as they say. Yep. Uh, they they said in their their podcast mm-hmm. a couple months ago. So uh, it's it has. It doesn't make sense to hang it up somewhere that you're just yeah, gonna be taking it down. Right. Again. It, it right. hasn't found a home yet because we're not at the next home yet. Yeah, that makes sense. I have mine on. Because I didn't want to have it knocked over while I figure out where I'm going to put it. It's on um, the bookshelf in our dining room, just kind of propped facing. You know, you see normally the spines of the book. It's leaning against the spine, so it's just facing out. So every time you walk past and glance over, you got a, you got a big got old a hand red hand pretty. right there. Yeah. All right. This was episode 108, Exploring Belgian Beers. Uh, as Marco said, they did this uh, live on YouTube, and then they transferred it over to audio-only audio format. So I listened to it on my podcatcher. They were drinking some super fresh beers, like the freshest beers I think they have ever had on any episode of their show. It was crazy. I don't know how they managed to get some of these. Yeah, and for Belgian beers, it's like, wow. Yeah. It's, it, they're no, all snooty. They're like, uh, oh, what are you doing <laughs> drinking that only year old beer? I know, like they were saying, like the whole, you know, Tropic Flare's newest release is like maybe two weeks old. They're like, God, you guys are drinking old ass beer. Old Tropic Flare. We have these Belgian beers that are like they basically could have just gotten them out of the tanks themselves, it sounds like. So I don't know how you guys pulled that off. Good job. They all sounded fantastic. Um, We're not going to go over a ton about the beers because it's just going to be, as we've said before, we don't want to be the kind of podcast that says they drank this and they said this about it. Then they drank this and said this about it. That's their show. And we want you to listen to their show. So we're just going to touch on, uh, there were three Belgian beers that they tried. Yes. Or inspired. Or inspired. Yes, Belgian inspired because not all of them or not most of them were made in Belgium. So we don't want right. to you know, get in trouble for calling something what it is. Is yeah, not. we don't want the Belgianese getting over here all upset. No kidding. Hey, you know what? They're not off work today. That's right. Just saying. They're not. They're not. They're not. Uh, there were some backyard updates from Caroline. They talked about uh, the birds, tomatoes, and if Caroline still strawberries. has... Strawberries. Strawberries, yes. Berries. Aphids. And if Caroline still has a green or a black thumb. From when she hit They're, it with a hammer. Um, mm-hmm. It's a bruised. Mm-hmm. So. Yes. Yes. Uh, they talked about uh, a lot of glassware talk, mm-hmm. and they talked about getting lost in Kroger. Like, you know, there was this new Kroger that was built, which I've been to a bunch of times. It's enormous. It is. It is a very big one. And uh, the Joe potential... thought it was on a different street. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Joe seems to get lost a lot, yeah. I feel like. I wonder how, how often he was tries to go from point like... to point. 
trying to hit his <laughs> the direction GPS. the GPS. And by the time he actually hits the right things, he's like 10 miles past where he needs to be. Right. Very possible. Right. Uh, they talked about having an etched glass from Guinness. That, I have that one. Caroline. I do too. I was going to say we needed to talk about that for sure because yeah. uh, Caroline got theirs at Kroger. Like so there did was I. The, oh, I got mine at Delhi Liquor. Okay. So, all right, all right. They, they just what? have this portable etching machine. Yeah. That they showed and up. And they're like, as long as you just have like a sample or a, you know, whatever. Like, because yep. when I went, I'm like, oh, well, do I need to buy, you know, a you know, Guinness? You know? Yep. Nope. You just have to at least have a sample or do whatever. And like, it's like a dollar for whatever because you can't just give away, you know, alcoholic beverages type right. thing. And they're like, yeah, just let us know what you want etched onto onto this Guinness glass. And it's like, what, a 20-ounce glass? I'm assuming it's. we all have the same one. I'm assuming it's Guinness it. does the exact I, I same. I believe uh, Brett Coleman Baker would call mm-hmm. it an imperial pint. Okay. Which is, I it's believe true. that's 20 like, ounces. Is it 20? That's what I thought. Yeah. Um, love the glass. I mean, it's it's fantastic. Glass is fantastic. It's great to. I forgot what I had gonna... etched onto it, and it's packed. So uh, I can't go look at it today. Unless Did I want to disturb the force, so to speak. I know that Caroline said that she didn't put Joe's name on it because she didn't want him to say it was just his glass. Right. But did she actually say what was etched on it? I didn't catch it if she did. I know she was just saying, yeah, but I didn't want to put your name on it because then you would say that it's your glass. She had a, and a I wanted to drink about it, it too. Tiny hands <laughs> on my glass. Can Joe even hold those with his tiny hands? Both, hands? both hands? Both hands. Okay. Both hands. Okay. Both hands, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, mine has, because I couldn't figure it out because I was like in the moment panic. Oh, what do you want on it? And I just hit panic mode and went, oh, God, I, I don't I don't know. I uh, eh, J&J drinks because Julia, Josh, we drink. There we go. So it's like the most ridiculously. It's kind of the way I was, I was like, <laughs> what do like, I want on it? What I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but that's awesome. So that's one other thing that we all uh, share. Like, I think I put like, hey, dude on it or something. I don't know. It's stupid. The next time. That we're all together at a location where we're doing like a bottle share type thing, which I, I still need more time, guys. I am still not ready for another bottle share with the Ludwigs. Um, fantastically fun, but I just, I still can't. I, I'm still not, I'm only like 87% recovered, I think. Uh-oh. But yeah, we should all bring our Imperial Guinness pints and uh, yeah. have that, yeah. Um, I think we're going to be bringing I'm home ready. some Next stuff that'll fit perfectly in those. should have house guests, though. That's the thing. Yeah, that's true. Just, just. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, let's see. They explain oh, Sharpie mustaches. Oh my God. We're. It's gonna be bad. Yeah. It's gonna be really. It's gonna be hilarious. It's gonna be an amazing time. But it's gonna be really bad. For How many a '90s while. quotes has uh, Carol- Caroline? Uh, let's see. Did she use recently? She used uh, the bomb.com. Mm-hmm. And then what was another one? That oh she used? shoot! I should have written those down because it was. I'm like. Man, she's kind of going back in time with a lot of these things that she's yeah, saying. Yeah, she's using a lot of, uh, she's like, oh, that's what the kids are saying. Like, no, that's what you were saying when you were So I kid. may have done a really dumb thing. I put my orange peel, like I kind of squeeze them, like put in the beer, whatever, it's They're fine. a little squeeze? Look. They're the little, tss, you know? Yeah, a little. Tss, tss. But the seeds are still in the orange peel, so I may end up like swallowing, like inhaling or swallowing one of those. So if I start dying at some point during this podcast, well, you're not going to die. It's it'll just... just be uncomfortable for people sitting around us for right for a bit. So heads up, if you guys all of a sudden hear like a weird cut, a weird silence, it's probably just me inhaling a uh, an orange seed. It's fine. They explained. Oh, I what it was. She went. <laughs> she went to Joe. She went. What? Oh my God! Yeah, from the old. That brewery, yeah. which we shall not name until another <laughs> recap that we're doing. Right. Good God. <laughs> that that was like one of the biggest commercials ever at the time. And it was like, not even all that great. Like, you know Caroline, what I mean? Like, Caroline, she just can't let it go. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Not at all. They talked about a brewer and breweries and, and craft beer uh, aficionado's all-time favorite topic. Decoction. That's right. As soon as they started, I'm like, oh, God, people are going to have opinions on this. And uh, luckily, they didn't Well, the thing they is, didn't they, go into they, their own opinions about it. It, it was about they another just, part of the brewing right. process. And then Joe <laughs> thought, oh, is that decoction? And, and he didn't actually come Which, up with it. He's like, is that the, uh, the thing... The thing with the thingy and the stuff, and then it was Cameron. And and right, he was like, oh, you mean no, it means he's like, yeah, that. that's yeah, the yeah. And then she kind of went into to what it is, which makes me wonder. It was step mash. Who, when they when they homebrew, 
that whole part of that made me go, who is actually doing more of the brewing? You is it know Joe who. or is it Caroline? You know who. Mm-hmm. I think I think everyone's starting to know. Yep. Who may have the 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 bigger grasp on uh, the bigger what on the beer grasp process, the best the biggest grasp on uh, I don't know why I'm acting like I'm holding a softball while I'm doing this. Who knows? Um, it's Caroline's hands are bigger. This is true. This is her. How, whose hands are bigger? Yours and mine. Probably probably, probably yours. Ooh. Oh, 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 just by barely, like a smidge. Yeah. All right, all right. So that's fine. Uh, and um, I, the only, I only Still had. I struggle with that split seam fastball. I, yeah, yeah, I can see that. You need mm. a better, better spread. I don't, I don't know. That doesn't. Mm. 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 I only had one other note on this episode. So I did had. you have anything else? Okay. Caroline, no, I 1,000% do not want to watch your kids while you guys go to Europe. <laughs> I appreciate you thinking about me, but I will have to respectfully decline that invitation. That's uh, very nice that they think yeah. that they would entrust like, you hey, with, with, with their kids, with right. their children. It's, it, that, would, that would be such a bad idea. Your kids would come back with, like, tattoos and the language of a sailor, and it would not, it would not be good. Oh, that's fine. I mean, for me, because I could give them back. Yeah, that's But all, for oh, them trying to... Eh. <laughs> I mean, kids nowadays, I mean, oh, what age do they get tattoos and start cursing like sailors? I got to think, yeah. what, second, well, third grade? Uh, yeah, it, it, well, it, yeah, I guess. I guess it depends on if you're in public school, private school. That right. also plays Catholic into school, it. school, depending. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, it's true. It's true. Second, this was third another... grade for me. I mean... Oh, is that when you got your first uh, first bit of ink? Cursing. Mm. Oh. Ink. No. no. Oh. <laughs> hey. Yeah, I had the first in the Guadalupe on my stomach. I have like, you know, three three tears on the underneath yes. my, my right eye. Three. Got got those three in ever? fourth grade. One one for each teacher that I may quit. Cause uh <laughs> yeah. Each one is a mark. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Freaking no. <laughs> uh this was another fun episode. I love they always have such a great unintentional tangents and the fact that they're like well this is on video now we can't just cut out some of this stuff What's made fun it even too is better what joe misremembers yes yes yeah is it, which is, we're not going to tell you because you need to listen to this episode yeah. because hopefully you will have just as much fun I would with do that the as. same thing if i was recording a podcast with my wife though like no nah. block out of like i showed i showed rachel a picture <laughs> the other day my sister sent us I was like, look, this is, you know, blah, blah, blah. And Rachel looked at it and goes, no. No, <laughs> no it's not. Like, no. what are you talking about? She's like, no. And she names the, the kids in the picture. I'm like, oh, shit, you're right. Oh. You're see, right. You're I, absolutely right. See, I have a different problem. I, I have enough conversations with myself in my head about stuff. Oh, that's all I do. I, I never remember if I've actually, like, asked or told the story or whatever, if I just thought I did. Yeah. So half the time I'll say something to Josh and be like, oh, you know, hey, there's this thing that sounds really cool. And he'll be like, yeah, you told me about that like four times already. I'm like, oh, I just I I just thought I, I knew I was thinking about telling you, but uh, I didn't know that I actually told you. Or, so your mind is on or repeat, opposite. Repeat, 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 repeat. Or I'll do the thing where where I won't where I think that I'll have already told him like three times. And so I'm like, oh, hey, we're going to be leaving for this thing tomorrow at whatever time. And he's like. What are you talking about? I'm like, you know, the, the thing that I've been telling you we're going to go to. You've never said a single thing about that. So I just, I, I'm in a can't win situation. Do we want to take a quick break before going to the think, next episode? Or do we, we want to just keep running? No, I think, yeah, I think, I think we it's should. a smart idea. To I think pause. we absolutely should. We're in the top of the eighth. We're oh, my God. Eight to four. All right. We'll be right back, guys. All right. We have made it back. back. And Marco... You were just telling me, so the way that we talked about Mad Tree 2.0 and how it's a little bit different than the last time you and I were here, I never realized that there were bathrooms by the um, the, the brew house side yeah. of things. And I'm like, well, is, you know, I have, I'm going to refill my water glass. And I know that mm-hmm. there's like the, the water dispenser up by the bathrooms closer to the Catchafier side. And yeah. I was like, well, is there a water filler over there? Because I haven't been over there yet. And what did you tell me? Oh, you should go. I, <laughs> so apparently... Yeah. Apparently, uh, you know, in, in, during our next break, I, I need to take a, a bathroom stop on yeah. at the bathrooms that I didn't know existed. All kinds of fun stuff happening today, but still Good no stuff. train. Still not a single train, or at least, I don't think. We're kind of sitting a little low. 
I can sing so, Drops of Jupiter if that'll help. No, let's okay. not. <laughs> let's not do that. Oh, my God. All right. What do you say we move on to the newly renamed Bruce Guy's Bruise News YouTube <laughs> show? Of course it was. Oh, my God. So... I think you and I both thought when it initially came out, the mm-hmm. the Bruce Guy's Happy Hour Barstool Perspective, we mm-hmm. both kind of looked at each other and went, ah, yeah, okay, know. okay, yeah. you know, all right, yeah. all right. You do, you. Um, they, uh, they, they did not get a cease and desist. No. But they, they something made them go, mm, they did you go know with, what? I'm glad they didn't go with the, the Bruce Guy's Happy Ending podcast. <laughs> no. Because as we learn in this episode and uh, kind of all the episodes, there are no happy endings Whoa. for anything that they talk about. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, almost all of the bruise news that they talk about, it's almost all not negative, but there's never like an, an upward trend for the things that we want there to well, be an upward trend for. That's, that is, unfortunately, a lot of the reality happening yes. right now in the industry. Yes, you know, very if, true. If, if, uh, craft beer was on a uh, a bit of an unbelievable clip where you know you would have uh, craft beer um, you know year over year up 30 30 40 50 100 mm-hmm. percent you know it just it, it not a hundred but uh, sure, some I know breweries yeah, yeah. are, are, are doing that sort of thing. But, yeah. you know, for craft beer to be on that ridiculous clip of, of 30 or 30 plus growth uh, percent growth, mm-hmm. uh, you know, year over year, um, that that's uh, not the case anymore. Uh, it's struggling as it's struggling to be just uh, positive, you know, yeah. just just yeah. shake out to be, you know, plus one, two percent. Yeah. I mean, and obviously there are the outliers in the industry that are. Um, well over that, uh, but the reality is the, the a vast majority of craft beer is is did not uh, do in um, 2022 what they did in 2021 mm-hmm. from a barrel perspective. But on some of the positive news that we did get from this episode that came out, uh, it actually came out yesterday, even though it was dated July 4th. So I don't know right. what, what their production team is doing with the dates, but it's all lies. The bar's looking great. Good. So the upcoming... Got some paint on the wall there. Got some paint on the wall. Got some shelving up. You can see There's some stuff going on there. Yeah, there. yeah. So that new coffee bar that they're putting in that, you know, I told you about, was that an episode or two ago? Coming along nicely. Nicely. Yeah. And Brett's back from the Homebrewers Conference out in California. The, and yeah, the home, he, homebrew, uh, homebrew con. Yeah, and he was very happy to see that a lot of home brewers are starting to do more stuff with fruit and fruited beers. And smoke. And smoke. Some Roush beer. Mm-hmm. So that was positive. Like, he's like, it's really I cool guess. to be seeing that. Well, I mean, if you like those yeah, things. It's good. It's good for some people. Maybe yeah. not everyone. Some people might not care about the progress of the bar. It's all the same. Sure. Yeah. Just don't yuck my yum. No, not at all. Yeah. No. They were both super, super, super happy. Yes. To continue talking about Bud Light. <laughs> so happy. I, I'm actually kind of surprised that Mike Morgan didn't throw his glass against the wall in <laughs> elatement. Like he was, he lit up as soon as Brett said, so you know what we're going to talk about? Same thing we've been talking about for months now. And Mike Morgan just, he almost stood up. Like you could see him gripping that glass going, oh my God, I'm so excited. We're going to talk about this again. <laughs> almost ex- as excited he was to hear that homebrewers were making seltzer. Yeah. <laughs> he, this was a good episode for him. Yes. I'll just put that out there. <laughs> this is. And fashion. And fashion. They were both doing really well. Snappy. This last episode. Very Holy snappy. cow. Very snappy. Very, well, or buttony. Although they could be snaps. You never know. Yeah. Camera's not focusing close enough, and I'll I I say I really don't care. This is possibly the last major holiday that Bud Light can use to recover from the complete nonsense that has been going on that they brought upon themselves. So I have no, um, you know, whatever happens to him happens to him. It's not going to impact me in any way, shape, or form. But this is, as they were explaining, kind of one of the last big drinking holidays that if the numbers don't start trending a different way, will they, they're always going to be around, I feel like. 
Yeah. But will they ever be able to recover to become, it could become the brand that they were? Right. It could it could become a very uh, quick and continuous uh, cascade downward mm-hmm. if uh, they can't turn this to their favor. The king is dead. Long live the king. Go Modelo. Ish. I know that 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 is so many like I don't know so gray any, and blurry. Uh, I don't. That, is that is any that better? better? Right. Is it, no, 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 it's better. No. I don't drink any of and it, I, so I mean, it doesn't I don't really. Mean better from a from a taste perspective. I mean a better from a. Are the companies any better? Right. Yeah. Right. Like like in the grand scheme of things, shitty companies are going to shitty company, basically. Yeah. Uh, there was more P. Diddy tequila update and news, which, again, I Michael think, was very excited about. I think uh, old uh, Mr. Combs mm-hmm. um, misread the level of his uh, impact. I would agree with that. I would agree. I think that if he would have started this, if he would have gone into the... Um, uh, the, the tequila market 10 years ago, late 90s, early 2000s, king of the world, potentially. But he's not, he's not a big name anymore. Like, he still has an incredible net worth, I'm sure, but he's not in the center of the public eye anymore, you know? It's, or at least not where he was, not where he used to be. So anything he does, any brand that he collaborates with, any any product that he becomes involved with, I don't think, like you said, is going to have the impact or the, you know, air quotes, importance that he thinks it probably should based on his name alone. I just, I don't understand where he's coming from at the risk of sounding uninformed about uh, this particular topic. Sure, yeah. He I, went I ahead heard. and called his distribution partners racist. Mm-hmm. Because they labeled his brand as a brands for, uh, you know, the the minority of folks, right? Uh, right. And uh, they 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 just they just ate them up some of George Clooney's Casamigos tequila brand, mm-hmm. and so therefore you are racist because of that fact. I'm like I I don't it, know, right? I is don't it, know. Is it that, or is it because your brand wasn't monetarily doing what they wanted it to do, but Clooney's brand was? Like, did it have anything yeah, to do with I, the people? I don't have those answers. I don't know. What you I don't know. You call them racist, <laughs> and they said, "Well, you know what? You're you have the right to do so, sure. and we have the right to cut." All ties, Ooh. yeah, yeah. That, that did lead into a, a bit of a conversation from Michael about him. He he's like a, he doesn't feel that he's ever had like a really really good high quality tequila. Well, so I he, will throw because he don't hang out with us. I was, that's what I was gonna say. So, Mr. Morgan, this is an open invitation. Any Tuesday that you want to stop, Mike. Mike, we're friends. Yeah, we're friends. We're friends. I've seen you in person twice. Yeah. I said hi to you for five seconds a year ago. Yeah. I know that we saw each other this past Missing Link Fest, but I don't know if he was really seeing much of anything at that point in the, in the evening. I he have, was having a good time. I have a full, unopened bottle mm-hmm. of Classe Azul. So, Mike, I, stop by. Well, even even not even not even yours, but stop by. Yeah. I know this is out of his comfort bubble as far as where he goes in the world. I understand. On a that. Tuesday, Higher that. Gravity Summit Park, we are there. I will buy you a full pour. It won't even be a split pour. Like I will buy you a full pour of Class Azul for you to try. Now, is that the like the best of the best of the best? I don't know. I don't know oh, enough the best about tequila. The best of the best. But it is damn good. It's really good. And I would love to this would to share that. Certainly change. It, it will impact the way you feel about tequila. I would agree with that. I would absolutely agree with that. Uh, Brett gave a list of the top whiskey and tequila brands. Whiskey. Whiskey. And he made Mike try to guess which ones they were. And he's just Jim like, Bean, I Jack don't Daniels. know. The, the Kings. Evan Williams. Yeah. Is uh, that the five? Maker's piece? Mark made number 10. 10, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And they talked about, like, the hand dip bottles and how all those poor Did women yep. probably, you know, died of carpal tunnel complications and yeah. and such. Uh, another thing. got me. Another thing that Mike got super excited about, new flavors of vodka. You know he's big into flavored <laughs> vodka. 
they both absolutely love the fact that grape stomping is getting popular again. <laughs> Seriously, guys, watch these videos. The looks on their faces, their reactions, that makes so it good. so worth it's it. So, so incredibly worth it. Uh, Brett gave his thoughts on a bad beer release of the week, which I believe, I'm, I, again, watch the episode. You will not regret it. I think they just got some of these at higher gravity. So if it is there when we are there on Tuesday, I'm going to check the price. I'm going to, if they have a single can, I will get a single can. And I will email them with my thoughts on both. Okay. I'm going to do it. I'm Let's gonna, go. It, it, it has a bunch of stuff that you cannot, cannot drink. Cannot drink cannot. At all. <laughs> you can't even look Can at this probably without not. having issues. So we will. So I will, if, if I'm able to... I will. I will get a can. I will see what the price is for you. Know, the single can as well as the four pack. I'm, I'm assuming it's four pack. It looks like it was 16 ounce cans, and I will. I will let them know. And they need to come to Higher Gravity Summit Park. Yes. And have it along with tequila. Agreed. Ooh, what about putting a tequila shot? In? No, no. That's probably. No, that's probably a. That's probably going you overboard a bit. Want, but I, sure, I don't know but probably I, not. Probably I don't, not. I don't know if you should do. That. Uh, you can find out. What a nasty beast is. Yeah. Oh, boy. That got some. Uh... So in addition to finding out what a nasty beast is, and it actually does have to do with alcohol. Oh, so, yeah. So was not in the way that I thought it was going to be. So everyone learned something. So it's terrible. It kind of, it, yeah, it's, it's not it's ter- great. The it's thought not is great. terrible. I yes. haven't had the beverage. Yes. No, neither have I. And I don't want, like, based on the name of its, in and of itself, I don't think I want it. No, nah, I'm, I'm good. They also talked about discovering what a Chicago handshake is, which ties into... Schlitz. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So that you got again, that was that was another one where they said, "Hey, do you know what this is?" And my my mind immediately went into the gutter, and I'm like, "Oh God, what are they gonna say?" And the actual answer wasn't much better. Wasn't it from our friend Greg? It was from our friend Greg. That was my next note. Huge shout out to Greg, which I'm not gonna say his last. I mean, they said his last name in this episode, but you know, out of respect, I don't know if he wants everyone to know. They can say it. But yeah, when he when he he was like, yeah, and this comment about about Schlitz actually still being available in the Cincinnati area came from Greg. And I'm like, oh, my God, we know Greg. Greg is awesome. That's Love right. meeting him down at uh, at Humble Monk. And hopefully he can make it up for, for an episode of our recording at some That's point because right. that would be fantastic. Or we can go get a Chicago handshake. From with Greg. <laughs> Let's get, get, let's all get together and give each other Chicago handshakes. You see, it doesn't, it doesn't, you can't. <laughs> it doesn't, it, it's not it a does, communal it's experience. Not, no, it shouldn't be a communal experience. It shouldn't, based, based on what it is, it shouldn't even be an experience. It just shouldn't, it just shouldn't exist. It's a thing, though. But it does. And if you want to know what this is, listen, or well, watch this episode of the Bruce Guys Bruise News title was how fucked is bud light this fourth of july it was great it was absolutely fantastic and they also let you know how you can get your face painted on the bar that's right you can get a fat head you can get a (laughs) they couldn't come up with the name we need to find out a fat head because we've sent them stuff and they just ignore us we need to find a way to get our our mugs or like our logo or something yeah on the wall of of uh of the bar that'd be pretty cool We'll find out. Because they said that they appreciate us. Yeah, they did. I mean, they may not have said us specifically, your, but, you know. Put a fat head up. Yeah, we got this. That's what Let's we should do. Let's take some headshots after we record so we have some really good pictures. Yeah, some fat To send to them and be like, hey, here you go. All right. Um, I, I'm still I'm still good on my beer, but I need to get more water. Um, Marco, you look like you're getting there. We have one more recap to do. It should be a shorter recap, and then we will wrap up this episode. So... Stick with us for another few minutes, and uh, we'll be right back. All right. For the last time this episode, we have made it back. back. And Marco was right. Those restrooms that are back by where the old cooler merch section, awesome. Awesome. They have the water station over there, just like in the other one. I mean, it's almost a, a carbon copy. So very glad that they have that space now for everyone's restroom needs. I really do love Mattry. I don't get so up here nearly I, I don't as get frequently up here enough. At, uh, n- and I don't have an excuse. Enough. Yeah, I don't. I really don't have a, a good excuse. Like I pretty much 
Well, I'd have to jump on to... I'm normally on the 75 side of things going to and from work, so I'd have to jump over to, like, the 71 side. But it's close enough to the Norwood lateral and all that to where it really would not be hard for me to get over here more often. I just, I don't know. I don't, I don't have an excuse. And it's terrible. I, I don't either. Uh, it's 15 minutes from, from where I currently live. Um, don't know why I haven't been here more often. I, it takes 15 minutes for me to get to the places I frequent near the Mason area. And so yeah. don't know why. It's just always been a reflex for me to go away from the city mm -hmm. uh, for the things that I like are in my circle. Mm -hmm. um, but so I was going to mention like potential parking because when they get busy, sometimes you might be parking across could. like on the cross yeah. side. But you'll run into those parking areas at Sonder, at Higher Gravity, at Common, at, you know, any of the other places around here. You are going to have those pockets where parking is a little more. I don't I don't want to say problematic, but Mantry actually has probably one of the best overflow situations of any of the places that, that you and I tend to frequent because yeah. you can park at crossroads. There's a pedestrian bridge across. You don't even have to try to like play Frogger across any roads. Yeah, and if you're to a get person, over here, even better. You're a pedestrian. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. All right. Well, with uh, our apologies to Mantry for not getting here nearly as much as we absolutely should. We'll try to remedy that in the future because I do like recording here. It is fun. I mean, I love it higher fun. gravity. It is, higher gravity is a little easier for us to kind of be a little more tucked away to where I feel like we're not in other people's way. We can set up a camera and do video without accidentally recording a bunch of other people. But man, Matt is such a great space. Great space. It is absolutely fantastic. Yep. All right. We have one show left to talk about. This is going to be a short one because it was a short episode for this show. And I am talking about, get ready, Marco, The Weekly Point. Uh, cheers, cheers, Julia. Cheers. Go yeah. ahead. And uh, as you're taking a sip, I'll go ahead and say congratulations to the Reds on closing out a win versus the Nationals. Excellent. And now that I took a drink of my beer for the cheers, it is your turn, Marco. Oh, that's this so was, good. This was such a do you, same thing in your glass that you've been drinking. Uh, it's new, so yeah, I'm gonna have it. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. When there's something new on the board, I mean, gotta go with it. You never know if it's gonna be there the next time. You you're never here. know. <laughs> when did Caleb from uh, BC's uh, start participating in the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Championship? Look at him. You see him out there? It's Caleb. Oh, is that Caleb? Oh shit. Caleb from no BC. Way. Look at that. Way Look to at go, him. Caleb. Dude, he, uh, wow, there's so many comments I can make about what I'm witnessing that and none of them are going to sound right. He's going to lose, but congratulations <laughs> for being there. Man. Joey Chestnut's going to crush this. Look at him. Man. Oh, he's so he's ready to pound some Never. dogs and then celebrate just, just, with some just the dogs barrel right down stout. the throat. And it's Doesn't just, that sound delicious? No, mm, just no. eating all you can eat for, you know, what, 10 minutes straight of Ugh. hot dogs and, and buns. Then a, and then, then get you a stout? And then get you a nice adjuncted stout oh, to no. chase that down. No, 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 no. You do, like, the crispiest boy after that. I would. Eat, well, I don't know that I even but would do that. But not an aficionado like him. I don't know that I even would do that just because the carbonation is still going to be there, which is going to add to the, like total volume of both solids, liquids, and gases in your stomach. I, mm. All three states of... Damn. All, yes, all of three matter. All three states of matter, yeah. Yes, yes. Speaking of barrel-aged and, and, and other, you know, heavier beers, because... This is Julia trying to this is, bring us back on track. I'm actually not, because this has nothing to do with the Weekly Pint. Josh and I went to Westside yesterday. And oh, you're kidding. They have, imagine that, I know, and they have so many barrels out in their tap room that they're putting their beers into, and... But if they're Imperial Stout, it's in Weller barrels. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. I saw that. I'm like, oh, this is going to be good. When, I don't know how long they're planning on keeping it there. I believe that they have been in the barrels. And this is just the, the one. Um, actually, I took a picture of it. It's a, uh, the Weller barrel was filled in 2015. And Westside put their Imperial Stout into it in 2021. So it's been okay. aging for almost two years. Don't know how long they're going to if it's going to be a two-year age, but super, super excited about 
about all of that. Wow, look at that. Yeah, yeah check, out, a, check out this. Uh, that, so, that is a picture. Uh, Julia is showing me a picture of the barrels at Westside Brewing yes. for those who are not watching on, on, the, on the live stream. On the live stream. And I love this picture. When I was going to take a picture, a guy was like walking in. He was like, oh, God, I'm sorry you're taking I'm like, no, 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 you're fine. So he posed for me. Nice. <laughs> so I have a picture of just some random nice. guy. Throwing the horns yeah. in front of the barrels. Awesome. Speaking of Weller, uh, Peter Weller uh, was a uh, RoboCop. Fun trivia fact right there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do you say we talk about the gnome and his incredibly short um, episode? Sure. I mean, yeah. if you don't want to talk about RoboCop, we, we can, can do talk. That. I've never seen RoboCop, so I don't have a lot to say. Oh, shit. He's walking away again. I'm sorry. I'm nothing but a disappointment to Marco. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I will watch it this week. Weekend, maybe. Yeah, I'll. I've seen. I've seen. I. I know the the image that was on the cover of the VHS tape at Blockbuster. In the, I'm not helping my situation at all here. Hmm. Let's talk about the weekly pint. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, uh, no went live super early. Was it two yesterday. o'clock in the afternoon? Yeah, something like that. All of a sudden, I'm trying I, to get work done and shit. I heard this little like do like the, my little live notification thing and what at first I didn't yeah and at first I I didn't click and then I'm like wait a second that I think that's my you know someone that I'm following has gone live and I look and it's the gnome and I'm like it's like two o'clock in the afternoon what is going on here apparently something about a fireworks show that night that I didn't get an invite to know, did right? you get an invite to it nope mm. what's yeah, up he with was, that. What's up with that? So he decided to go live early just to kind of, you know, talk about a couple little things and give a show because there was no Cincy Brewcast this week. So he wanted to at least have something out there. Yeah, we know. Which is fine. Yeah, we, we are acutely aware of whenever any of the shows that, that are typically pretty consistent do not have episodes. Not going to mention the other ones. You know who you are. Right. We still love just you anyway. Mirror, but, you know, just look in the mirror and, and ask answer yourself. answer for yourself. How committed to your podcasting are you? I mean, we're here on a holiday. I mean, we we're could, here, man. We could both be at our homes or out somewhere grilling out. I mean, we're still drinking. We're going to drink no matter where we are. But Swimming we with be, the gnomes family. We could be out, like, playing horse, you know, water horse, you know, where you throw the kids. Like, they sit on your shoulders and they jump off into, like, the deeper ends of the pool and stuff. Yeah. We could Do be you need to rent that. kids for that, Julia? I, I'm sure we could. I'm sure there's a kid rental place somewhere. Yeah. Or just borrow, like, Caroline and Joe's kids. I'm That's sure true. they'd be willing to give them up for us yeah. to, you know, lob them across a swimming pool. Well, they want someone to take them for a while. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, apparently for this episode, uh, Gnome took a tip from us and forgot to hit the red button. Yep. In the beginning, he went, and now I'm going to have to figure out what exactly I need to do for this. So hope I already saw it on my podcatcher, so he figured it out. He's much better at this stuff than we are. I run into things like that, and I just it takes me like three days to just go, what the F? He's got it all figured out except consistency. Yeah. It's fine, though. Yeah, it's, all, it's, 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 it's good. It's, it's fine. fine. There he's was got a, life going on. You yeah, know? He's got absolutely. A, he's got honeysuckle to deal with. And fences. Mm-hmm. And fences covered in honeysuckle. So, uh, and not inviting us to 4th of July parties. I mean, that's really saw the issue. Saw an uh, episode of Moonshiners where they were making honeysuckle moonshine. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. That could probably be good, maybe? I don't know. They don't said know. it was good, but who fucking knows? It's fake as eh. shit. Yeah. I mean, when you're making moonshine, if it doesn't make you blind, is it really that good? That's not even That's not even <laughs> a thing. It's, it's that the show is fake. I mean, in the end, there's moonshine, but none. Yeah, but you none don't of see the, the process the whole way through, and the reason why you don't see the process the whole way through is because they don't do it. Well, and that because they 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 show you segments parted enough to where it's not to where they're legal. Well, well, well are you saying that some of these reality shows aren't real? I, I'm don't break my just, heart here. None of this. Okay. 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 Speaking of real or not real, one of the biggest conversations in this episode of Weekly Pint, beer styles. 
Are they real? Are they that made up? Big, Do they matter? That was a big part. Yeah. And I, I see the arguments on both sides. It's our good buddy, Elijah. Oh, yeah. Shout out uh, and thank mm-hmm. you for being on our 100th podcast oh, episode. Yeah. Yes. Uh, he said since uh, styles are made up, I mean, uh, what does it matter? To which Gnome had some very good, not, not a rebuttal per se, but a good kind of counter argument. It was really good. Like, it was, it was a great conversation, and it's one yeah. of those topics that... Just like the whole, are there too many breweries in Cincinnati? I don't feel like there is necessarily a like a clear right or wrong answer. It all depends on how you're seeing it, where you're coming from. You know, are you someone who is on that super nerdy beer side of things versus you like craft beer, but you're not, uh, you don't care to understand every single facet of how it's made, what it is, what it's made with, what the style is, that type of thing. It's a huge conversation that wasn't going to be answered in this episode. No, no, but I love the conversation that was happening. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Certainly find the Weekly Pint to to get into that conversation. Right, either watch it on the video format or or listen to the podcast that he put out about it. Absolutely. Yeah. He was interested. Uh, well, he let you know why there was no broadcast this week. Basically, life chaos, like all incredibly good reasons. I mean, not like there was a holiday or anything going on that could have prevented him from recording. Kind of like what we're doing, but right. you know, it's fine. It's, it's fine. fine. That's life. Uh, he was interested to to know, kind of a a social experiment, if you will. Can you convert a macro beer drinker to a craft beer drinker using? the current kind of influx of craft light lagers that are now out there. You know, you have, you know, Matry, it's not necessarily light, but you have like Matry's legendary lager. You have Fretboard's new light lager. You have, you know, Cheetah. Garage Beer. You have Cheetah. You have so many, you know, I mean, Westside has one. I mean, you know, they're common. Do they? Could be, imagine that. Wow. But you could, you know, if, you, if you're sitting out with someone, and this was taken directly from the episode, if you're out sitting with, you know, a group of people and everyone kind of has their own coolers, their own stuff, and you see that someone's drinking, you know, a High Life, a Coors, some, you know, macro lager type beer, the next time they go, you know, toss them one of yours, toss them a fretboard light lager, Mandarin Legendary, whatever you have that's craft, and just say, hey, you know, why don't you, you know, try this, and... Can that be that step that gets them into seeing what craft beer is and can be and how it can fill that uh, that part of their drinking portfolio? You know, and I think that that would be a really a really cool thing to see. I mean, I think that everyone that I hang out with is pretty craft heavy already. But I, I would agree, but I, I think there's a lot more exposure now to that that people have to craft mm-hmm. uh, people are a lot more willing to to give it a shot mm-hmm. and I think what happens is or could be that you have fun you have a good time you have a few beers it's mm-hmm. nice and then it it prompts somebody to be interested to go to the space right and then that space hopefully they have a great experience now what you have is an emotional connection now that you have an emotional connection then you start to buy that beer a little more often mm-hmm. uh, but experiment with some of the different offerings that they have mm-hmm. that emotional connection is almost the sole reason why the big beer brands are the big beer brands that they are today Breton might go into that goes back to war times to where this was you know the the, the beer that was given to them and it, this was the beer that, that they would drink when they were at war. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this was the beer that they were familiar with when they came back home. Mm-hmm. And so it just kept it, it, it kept building. Uh, and so I think that's how that's how we build from people who are not drinking craft right now is through being friendly, sharing, and then getting them to have an emotional experience. Sure, and I know that you started that with saying a lot of times sometimes it's taking people to the space, bringing someone to your local brewery so that they get that kind of the the almost the five senses in experience it's not just what they're drinking but it's the sights and smells and sounds of the tap room it's seeing all the different you know beers that you can get on on um, on tap 
But I think that you can definitely tie that experience, that emotional attachment in as well when you are just everyone sitting around watching fireworks, doing, you know, doing whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And just the next time they reach for their can of of high life, you go, oh, hey, here, you know, why don't, why don't you try one of these and toss them, you know, a can of, of common, a can of legendary lager, whatever, whatever craft you brought. Because especially with the holiday 4th of July, you could very well trigger that emotional memory, that emotional response to saying, man, I remember watching this amazing fireworks show where I, you know, watching the neighborhood's kids play in the, the neighborhood pool. And then, you know, my, my neighbor from down the road gave me this, this beer for a mad tree that I've never had. And man, it was really good. So now, you know, next time I go to Kroger, I'm going to pick up, a, I'm going to look for a six pack, a 12 pack, a, a whatever of that mad tree beer. And that door is now open because like you said, there was that, that emotional or that, um, that situational experience that, you know, how that memory associated with it. So I don't know if you necessarily would have to bring them to a brewery to, to trigger that. But if there's something big happening around you and it's not just some random, oh, hey, you know, you're, hey, neighbor, you know, mowing the yard, it's hot here, have a, you know, a craft beer. That might not elicit that same that same memory trigger that something like a holiday or a different type of gathering might. But, but yeah, I, I think that it absolutely is yeah, I, a I, fantastic way to try and open that door for them. Yes. And the thing is, it, it doesn't necessarily be... It doesn't necessarily have to be uh, an active advocate uh, um, intention. Mm -hmm. I think sure, a sure. lot of us are just being friendly in what we have in being friendly is our 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 connection to craft beer, sure, right? Sure. It, and it's so the excitement in it. Like, man, I, I'm really excited about this beer, this brewery, this brand, this whatever. Like, I mean, you know me. I mean, Josh, exactly. Josh kind of gives me, you know, fake crap about that. Sometimes, like, why did you buy a six pack of this beer? You know, you're probably only going to want to have three, four cans. I'm like, so I can share the other two cans, so I can give it to someone else. Mm -hmm. Well, why are you buying it just to give it away? It's like because to me, that's part of of sharing what I'm excited about and the things like, oh, you like this kind of beer, you like this. Oh, I, I've got something in my fridge. Let me get this for you. Let me, you know. I did that with my neighbor who, you know, he's, he's also our, our yard guy with um, Ryan Geist Beer for Humans. We were talking. He was like, oh, yeah, oh, you yeah, know, when yeah. it's hot, we like, you know, kind of the, the lighter stuff, but I still like IPAs. My so wife you have really a human this. cutting your grass. I do have a human cutting uh, my grass. Which I have is one why, as well. Which is why the beer for humans works so well. If it yeah. was like a, a, if it was a robotic And as a human, cutter, he's a person. Yes. And he can only be cutting <laughs> one grass, <laughs> one, single one yard, grass at a, <laughs> one yard at a time. <laughs> yes. But gotcha. it is. It's that same thing where, you know, we started talking about beer and I'm like, I have this in my fridge. Let me, you know, let me give this to you. Let me know what you think. And yeah, next time he came over, he was like, that was really good. I and, you know, did that same with a coworker. It was, you know, normally he gets, you know, cheetah, that type of thing. I'm like, have you tried, you know, this? He's like, no, I haven't. I'm like, I know because he's a, he goes to Kroger. So I'm like, what do I know is at Kroger? Because mm -hmm. if I say something that maybe you can only really get a bottle shop or in the tap room, whatever, chances are good they're never going to see it to try it. They're not going to go out of their way to find that one recommendation that I had for them. But if I know it's a Kroger, like, hey, you know, look for this next time. If you don't like it, I'll buy the rest of the six-pack from you. You just let me know. Came back in, you know, the next week. I was like, yeah, yeah that was actually really good. I might have to, you know, kind of, you know, mix up, you know, what I'm drinking and add that into it. Right there. Perfect. Excellent. Perfect. Excellent. Yeah. And that, and th that type of uh, that type of interaction, that type of, of, of just positive. Don't you don't know, get that just, with macro beers. There's not that community that that desire to to share. Well, you did. Well, I, you you did. I don't know. I don't you know. did, and it and it sort of set the sub the sub base for. Um, but July 4th is a perfect example. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I'm old enough to say, you know, go back to the early 80s. 
when there being were only born like the 15 70s, stars on the flag. Being born in the 70s, I could say, <laughs> like, you, you have a family gathering. Fourth of July is a, a great example. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. you have your, you know, your, aunts your and barbecue, your yeah. aunts, uncles, you know, you got your extended family around. Everybody's, you know, huddled around a grill and maybe, maybe they're doing it right, doing it wrong. You didn't even know. Right. Uh, but they had... They had the, the, the big beer of choice that everyone liked, and everyone enjoyed that experience. And then it, it just kept domino effect to, you know, all the other experiences. But that's because— Everyone had their own cooler, but they all—because, I mean, again, back when kind of when we were growing up, it was all macro beers in each of those coolers. So, but yeah. some people would have, you know, the, the Millers, you know, the Buds or whatever, and another cooler would be, you know, the High Lives or, you know, Medellin or whatever it might be. Oh, hey, you know, you've been drinking a lot of what you brought here. Why don't you have some of the stuff yeah. that I brought? So now it's, it was all macro, but it was still. It's 40 years later to where you, you could show up at someone's house. There is no macro anywhere. And there's every, you know, there's 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 light beer, there's hoppy beer, there's dark beer, there's sours. Mm-hmm. There's, you know, so many different uh, forms of, sure. of, of offering. But I feel like there, and, and I don't want to, you know, drag this on too long. But yeah, I do we feel like we, do. we do. I have I have one other note for this episode, but to kind of sort of close up the, the whole macro converting to micro craft, that type of thing. I feel like like what you were saying, you had, you know, the, the big family gathering, to use that example. Everyone had their coolers, and it was all macro beers. And people would share, oh, hey, yeah, grab, you know, a Bud from my cooler. Grab, you know, a Miller from my cooler. Grab a Coors from, from mine. But or you a know, Schlitz. Or a Schlitz. Or, hold on, I got a button for that. Schlitz. But at the end of the day, when everyone dispersed and went home, the person that grabbed a can of Miller when their cooler had cores in it, when they get home, they're not going to buy a 30 rack of Miller. They're still going to just do cores. Where I feel like with Kraft, they grabbed a can of legendary lager. Now when they go home and they're t- it's time for them to put some more beer in their fridge, they may very well get some legendary lager instead of immediately switching back to what they were drinking. Now they still might, but I feel like the conversion, so to speak, from one macro to another macro beer isn't as likely as going from drinking all macro to having that craft thrown into it. I don't know. Just my thoughts. And and really, what are we talking about? We're talking about uh, local. We're talking about small mm-hmm. business. We're talking about um, small batch. We're talking about you know care for ingredients, care for community, care for the environment. We're talking about supporting uh, the people that work at those places, mm-hmm. the ones who right. are our neighbors, and all that. And we're not discounting or discrediting anybody who works at a, a big beer facility. No, not at all. To, not at all. Any point that their that their job is. No. What we're saying is that that um, being interested and supporting and and being an advocate, even an advocate in a small way of just having a T-shirt, is supporting a business that started from uh, a small idea and then a possibility, a dream maybe, and work to become a reality. Mm -hmm. And those realities only continue with our support. 100%. So, anyways, um, Julie, is there anything else? Uh, one other note, uh, Gnome shared some science. This is 100% fact. Ah, uh, yeah. Beer tastes better when you're blowing shit up. Okay. Scientific. Science. Yep. It, so a gnome it, said it, so it has to be true. Absolutely. Gnomes only speak the truth. That's all I got. Uh, was there anything else at all, period, for episode 101, or if you write it out, episode lol? Yeah. Shout out to Dippa Josh. Uh, that we want to say before we wrap this up? No, thank you, everybody. Uh, for those of you who have been with us a long time, thank you. Uh, 100 episodes to today, 101. Mm-hmm. Uh, and for those of you just joining, uh, thank you. Uh, and Julia... We, we, Julie and I truly appreciate your listenership, your time, your time uh, that we can't give it back to you. And right. uh, so it's a, the one resource that you have that I can't put a dollar amount on. Uh, however, what I am going to say is thank you. And 
uh, we are also, because of that, also asking for your dollars. <laughs> uh, you know, this, this is a, a passion project for us, but it's a passion project that every week uh, does cost us money. And you help mitigate those costs with being supportive. And so thank you uh, for your support thus far. Thank you for your support in the future. And um, come along with us. Our show is, is undergoing a lot of um, uh, tweaks and changes and things. And in the past hundred episodes, in the next hundred, I'm sure we're going to do the same. So Agreed. thank you. Happy Fourth of July. And Julia is going to give you all the info on how to get in touch with us. Yes. Uh, first and foremost, hopefully by the time you're listening to this, it will be after the Fourth of July. Hopefully you all still have all your fingers, all your toes. Hopefully you had a safe and happy and craft beer filled holiday uh, with that being said please like subscribe share review all that good stuff if you enjoyed what we did today the biggest and most important thing really though is telling a friend or a neighbor or a family member or tell you know co or tell someone about our podcast if you like what we did if you want to follow us on social media we are at truth beer pod pretty much everywhere all of our episodes are on any podcatcher you can imagine. If it's not, let us know. Uh, our episodes are audio only also on YouTube. If you want to, as Mark was saying before, give us a couple bucks to help us to be able to continue to do this without too much you know, personal financial strain. Sure. Uh, you can go to truthbeerpod.com. We have some links at the top of the page, once for one-time donations. If you just want to throw us a couple bucks and then move on with your life. Or if you'd like to become a Patreon subscriber, we have some exclusive content that we're putting out. Um, we're trying to do at least one exclusive piece of content a month. We're going to try to up that to two. But just the way that life goes, we're doing the best we can. All those links are at truthbeerpod.com. Uh, other than that, Marco, what are you going to be doing next Tuesday? Julia, I know we're going to be getting together to talk about Cincinnati Craft Beer Podcast. I think I know where we're going to be. Uh, but you never know. You never know. <laughs> Cheers and happy fourth. Cheers. Happy fourth. I will see you there on Tuesday. Bye guys.